Welcome back to Tales of Chemistry. Today, let us learn something regarding aldehydes. Aldehydes are carbonyl compounds. So what do we mean by carbonyl compounds? Aldehydes contain C double bond O group. So presence of C O group makes aldehyde a carbonyl compound. The functional group in an aldehyde is CHO, which can be written as C double bond O and single bond H. So this is CHO. Example for some important aldehydes as per ISC is HCHO. The first member in the Aldehyde homologous series. This one in the common system, this is called formaldehyde. And in the IUPAC system, there is only one carbon, so meth. And when only one carbon is there, by default, AN will be written, meth an. And the secondary suffix based on the functional group is al. Aldehydes, first two letter, al. So, methanal. The functional group's carbon is counted. That's why one carbon and an, al. Now, second member of the family, CH3, CHO, it is called acetaldehyde or in the IUPAC system, 1 plus 1, 2 carbons are there. Eth, between the carbon, there is a single bond. So, un and uh, the secondary suffix is al for all aldehydes. So, this is ethanol. Third member, CH3, CH2, CHO. The common name of this is propionaldehyde or, and the IUPAC name is prop. Prop stands for three carbon atoms. Un stands for single bond between carbons and AL, propanal. Okay, so this and one more aromatic aldehyde we need to study that is C6H5CHO, which is called benzaldehyde. Benzaldehyde. Now, let us move on with the preparation of aldehydes. The first preparation that we need to study here is aldehydes can be prepared by oxidation of alcohols. So, number one, oxidation of alcohols. Okay. Primary alcohols on oxidation so I'm just writing a nascent oxygen here. Primary alcohols on oxidation gives us the corresponding aldehyde. But there is one condition. The oxidizing agent, the oxidizing agent has to be PCC. Pyridinium. Chloro, chromate, PCC is the oxidizing agent. Problem is, if you use any other oxidizing agent, your reaction will not stop at the aldehyde stage. Your end result will be a carboxylic acid. So now, if you want to prepare aldehyde, then the oxidizing agent need to be P 
PCC. It's absolutely fine if you forget the uh, full form for PCC. Pyridinium chlorochromate. If you cannot remember this, it's absolutely fine. Just learn it as PCC. Now, let's take some examples. H, one second. Primary alcohol needed to be taken. So, I'm taking CH3OH. This is methanol. Methanol is treated with PCC. PCC provides us with nascent oxygen. Okay. It is an oxidizing agent. So, what do you get here? H C H O. Okay. H C H O and along with that water. This H C H O is nothing but meth an al. One more example let us take. C H 3 C H 2 O H. Treat this with PCC. PCC will provide you with nascent oxygen and the aldehyde is CH3CHO plus H2O. So this is one important method of preparation. The importance here is using the correct oxidizing agent which is PCC, pyridinium chlorochromate. Second method of preparation which is equally important is from hydrocarbons. From hydrocarbons, under that the first one is from alkenes, double bonded hydrocarbons. Now, this is done by ozonolysis. So, from alkenes, by ozonolysis. So, let us take CH2 double bond CH2. Treat this with ozone, all right, at uh, around 196 Kelvin temperature. Now, here, what happens is, you are adding ozone across the double bond. So, an intermediate called ozonide will be obtained initially. Now, I just said that you are adding ozone across the double bond. That means on both the sides of the double bond, whatever groups were remaining, that will still remain. And then that one of the oxygens connects the two carbons in this manner and the other two oxygens are here. So basically this is you are inserting that O3 between the two carbons. Okay. Now this is the ozonide. Now this ozonide is to be treated with a zinc and Plenty of water, zinc and water, it breaks the bond between, you know, oxygen and the CH2 group as well as the bond here is also broken. So, three times the bonds are broken, one, two and three, three bonds are broken. Okay, now this oxygen goes away with a zinc water mixture. The other oxygen stays with the CH2 group. So, you will be getting two units of CH2O. Now, what is this CH2O? CH2O is nothing but C, one hydrogen, a double bonded oxygen and a single bonded hydrogen again. That is, this carbon is connected to the two hydrogens by single bond 
and the carbon is connected to oxygen. As of now, you can see only a single bond. But here there is a broken bond on the carbon. There is a broken bond on oxygen as well. Those two are overlapping to make the double bond. So two molecules of HCHO, formaldehyde, are the product. Fine. So ozonolysis of ethene results in the formation of formaldehyde or methanol. Now, let us take another example. Say probably CH3, CH double bond, CH, CH3. So, this is but 2 in. I am treating it with ozone at the required temperature. That is around 196 Kelvin. Now, ozone is to be added across the double bond. So, CH3, CH, CH, CH3. So, what did I exactly do here? I left a little bit of gap between the two carbons which are connected by double bond. Then, the same two carbons, I'm connecting them with the help of one oxygen, again connecting them with the help of two atoms of oxygen, after which I will treat the ozonide with zinc and water. Then the bonds are broken. Okay. And oxygen becomes free that goes away with a zinc water mixture. And what is remaining there? CH3, CH, single bond O, but there is a broken bond on the carbon. There is a broken bond on oxygen as well. Those two broken bonds join together to give you a double bond. So you are getting two units of CH3CHO. All right. Now, what kind of questions do they ask here? The questions are say, for example, a particular hydrocarbon on ozonolysis. Followed by treatment with zinc in water gives a mixture of uh, HCHO and CH3CHO. The question can be either identify the hydrocarbon or they can ask you to write the balanced equation. Now, how do I deal with this? I start with the product. Okay, so one product is H C H double bond O. The other product is C H three C H double bond O. Now, when I identify the parent or the hydrocarbon, remember what have you done here? Wherever the double bond was there, on that position, you are breaking the bond. Correct? Wherever double bond was there, on that position, you are breaking the bond. And you are adding oxygen, double bonded oxygen. So, you just need to do the reverse. Wherever there is C double bond O, remove it. Remove it and join the other pieces together. So, you have H, C, H, double bond, C, H, CH3. So, it was propene. 
okay now what if i take a branched hydrocarbon or else let me give you if the products are if the products are ch3 co ch3 this is not an aldehyde this is a ketone and on the other side maybe we have ch3 cho what is the hydrocarbon okay the question is to predict the hydrocarbon how do we do this so let us see what are the products so first of all i am listing the products ch3 c ch3 double bond o and the other product ch3 c h double bond o once i identify the position of the c double bond o i just need to put those oxygens in a bracket or in a box connect the remaining parts together ch3 c c h 3 double bond c h c h 3 so this is your hydrocarbon so these are the type of questions that you can expect from ozonolysis next method of preparation from hydrocarbon itself is by hydration of alkynes by hydration of alkynes okay now example let's take the simplest alkyne h c triple bond c h add this with water treat this with water but when you add water you need 20% dilute solution of sulfuric acid and 1% solution of hgso4 you if you miss the percentage it is fine dilute sulfuric acid and mercuric sulfate is to be taken now when you add water okay what do you get h c and double bond c h okay now i'm just sending one of the hydrogens to any one of the carbon because both the carbons are identical so i'm sending h to one of the carbons oh to the other carbon this results in the formation of enol so there are two carbon eth so this is a eth enol eth enol this is unstable because the carbon same carbon contains the double bond as well as the oh group so in this case there is a proton shift h plus from oh moves to the neighboring carbon i repeat h plus of the oh moves to the adjacent carbon to the next carbon so what do you get h c h and the third hydrogen accordingly the double bond will shift double bond becomes a single bond this h will remain and here you get a double bonded o so basically the double bond is coming here and the hydrogen is moving to the neighboring carbon so what are you getting here you are getting acetaldehyde in 11th standard you have studied this uh, in isomerism under keto enol isomerism they are tautomers keto enol isomerism keto enol isomerism one more example with this 
Now, suppose if you take propyne CH3 C triple bond CH plus water in presence of dilute sulfuric acid and dilute mercuric sulfate solution. Markonikov addition will take place. What do we mean by Markonikov addition? H plus will go to the carbon which already has more number of hydrogens. So, you will be getting CH3C double bond C H the second H OH will move on to this position. Okay, then proton exchange. This double bond will shift here and proton will move to the next neighboring carbon, the carbon which was earlier connected by double bond on to the carbon, H plus will shift. Okay, resulting in CH3C double bond O single bond CH3. So here the product is a ketone. Now, something that we are understanding here is ketones and aldehydes can be prepared by similar methods of preparation. Next one, next method of preparation is from this is the second method of preparation. First one was oxidation. Second one was using hydrocarbon. Third one is from acyl chlorides. What are acyl chlorides? Acid chloride. So let me take a general acid chloride. RCOCl. General representation. RCOCl. This is treated with hydrogen and I need a little bigger arrow here. I need to accommodate a lot of things. First of all, palladium supported by barium sulfate and sulfur in boiling xylene. All of these conditions are to be written. Palladium supported by barium sulfate and sulfur in boiling xylene. What happens is this Cl moves away with one of the hydrogens. So you get HCl. So what do you have now? What is remaining? RCO and one of the remaining hydrogen. So this is your aldehyde. Let us take specific examples. CH3C double bond O Cl plus H2 under similar conditions. I'm not repeating the condition. You will be getting HCl one of the hydrogen from H2 and the Cl, HCl plus CH3, C double bond O, H, acetaldehyde. Another one example, CH3, CH2, COCl plus hydrogen under similar condition gives you HCl and CH3, CH2, COH. Okay. Now, whatever is your acid chloride, the first one is a general representation. Second one, CH3, COCl is ethyl unoil. Chloride, ethanol chloride, it gives you ethanol. And this is proper un OYL chloride, propanol chloride, it gives you propanol. 
Okay, so this is one of the very important methods of preparation of aldehyde. Also, this is a named reaction. Name of this reaction is Rosenmund reduction. This particular method of preparation for aldehyde is called Rosenmund reduction. Point to be noted, HOCl cannot be used here. HCOCl, sorry, HCOCl cannot be used because it is unstable. HCOCl cannot be used. The reason is HCOCl is unstable. All right, let's move on with the next method of preparation, which is also a named reaction. This is called Stephen or Stephen's reduction. In Stephen's reduction, alkyl cyanide is treated or alkyl nitrile. Alkyl cyanide is treated with SNCl2 and HCl at a very low temperature, 17 to 22 degree Celsius of temperature. And your product here, okay, initially will be R, C, H. Okay, the CN is actually R, C, triple bond N, isn't it? So, that now becomes R, C, H double bond N, okay, R, C, triple bond N has become double bond N and one H moves on to the carbon and on the nitrogen, you have a H and HCl, okay. So, this is an unstable uh, intermediate which on hydrolysis which on hydrolysis gives you RCHO. Now, if you feel writing all this is becoming complicated and we are not familiar with this intermediate, what you can do is just write RCN. On the arrow, you write SNCl2 in presence of HCl at 17 to 22 degrees Celsius of temperature, you will get RCHO. Okay, this is Stephen's reaction. Ketones cannot be prepared by this method. Even Rosenmund reduction is only for aldehydes, not for ketones. Then, So this is the way you can write Stephen reaction. You can take appropriate, uh, uh, you know, RCN and accordingly you can prepare the corresponding aldehyde. There is one more, a different method of preparation, but that won't go under Stephen's reduction. You can use a different set of reducing agent here. This is another method of preparation, which is reduction, but you are not using SNCl2 and HCl. Instead, you are using a reducing agent, which is called DIBAL, sorry, BA, small letter L, H. Okay, and uh, followed by after using the reducing agent, you will have to hydrolyze this reaction okay, at a very low temperature. Okay, now here what happens is your product will be RCHO. Now, what is this dibal H? Find the full form for the reducing agent is di 
isobutyl so the d is for di i is for iso b is for butyl di isobutyl aluminium hydride okay now stephens reduction or reduction using dibal h are rare in isc these are not frequently asked questions but it is mentioned in syllabus we are just learning it okay the next one is definitely very important that is from calcium salt of carboxylic acids okay calcium salt of carboxylic acid need to be heated so let us take couple of examples in which we are heating calcium salt of carboxylic acid so i am taking h c o o again h c o o and calcium so this is called calcium salt of formic acid formic acid iupac name is methanoic acid okay so you can also call this calcium salt of methanoic acid or else this is called calcium formate in the common system calcium methanoate in the iupac now why formic acid or why methanoate look at the acid part h c o o h is formic acid or methanoic acid from that you have removed the hydrogen and on the position of that hydrogen you have written or you have added a metal but calcium is a bivalent metal so what will happen you have to repeat this calcium is bivalent hydrogen was monovalent so when you remove one hydrogen okay you can write actually metals like sodium potassium etc they are monovalent like hydrogen but since calcium is bivalent you need two such formate groups all right now moving on so that's why this is called calcium formate okay now you just need to heat this strongly when you heat calcium formate strongly there is a removal of a molecule of calcium carbonate now look at this how am i removing calcium carbonate see here i identified the presence of calcium then from here i can take away coo and from here i can remove oxygen now this is my calcium carbonate c a c o 1 2 3 c a c o 3 now what is remaining there h c o h c o and on the bottom part i have one h so i have prepared formaldehyde here h c h o or formaldehyde is prepared by this method okay so what is our conclusion heating calcium formate gives us formaldehyde along with calcium carbonate okay now 
let us uh, heat probably uh, two different calcium salt of carboxylic acid say ch3 c double bond o o calcium repeat the acid part c double bond o ch3 which is this acid acid with two carbon atom ethanoic acid or acetic acid so this is calcium acetate this is calcium acetate or else you can call it calcium ethano8 ethanoate i need to mix this with calcium formate so to prepare an aldehyde okay to prepare an aldehyde presence of calcium formate is compulsory fine now when i remove or when i heat this i need to remove calcium carbonate since here there are two uh, calcium salts obviously we will be removing two caco3 one from the first sample the other one from the second sample right now ca CO3, the first CaCO3 and look at this. This is the second CaCO3 that is removed. Now, when I join those broken fragments together, okay, this is the way I'm connecting them. Look at this. CH3CO Okay, CH3CO will be moving away with this hydrogen. So, I'm getting CH3CHO. I'm using different colors so that you will understand this better. Now, this part, HCO, okay, that will be moving with CH3. So, once again, you are getting CH3, CHO. So, your result is two molecules of acetaldehyde. Now, if this is confusing to understand, okay, that is uh, the green boxes I'm putting together and uh, here the black boxes instead you can just uh, rearrange when you are removing calcium carbonate itself you can uh, arrange them in such a way that identifying the product becomes easy now see i am repeating the same so this is your calcium acetate or calcium ethanoate now i am treating it with h C O O C A O C O and H. All right. After this, you know, when you show the removal of calcium carbonate, suppose here from top you are removing only oxygen, and from bottom you are removing uh, C O two. Here you reverse it. What you should do is here remove this part co2 from the top and just oxygen from the bottom now only see this you have to join this with this so you will get ch3 cho and at the bottom also ch3 and CHO. So, two molecules of CH3CHO along with two molecules of calcium carbonate. Now, what if we don't take calcium formate? Let us see because a while ago I told you if you want to prepare an aldehyde, then presence of calcium formate is compulsory. But what if there is no calcium formate taken? Just calcium acetate is taken and heated strongly. So let's try that. CH3, 
COO, CA, repeat the acid. Okay, and I'm not taking calcium uh, formate. I'm just heating this. So I will have to remove calcium carbonate. Ca CO3 is removed. CaCO3. Now, what do I have? What is remaining now? I have CH3, CO and a CH3. CH3. CO, CH3. So this tells us that uh, you will be getting a ketone as the product if calcium salt of formic acid is not taken. Calcium salt of formic acid, if not taken, then your result will be a ketone. The name of this particular ketone here is acetone. So I must say here, every paper, every board examination paper, either the method for preparing an aldehyde or for the preparation of a ketone is compulsory. One question from this, heating of calcium salt of any carboxylic acid is a regular question. So please be prepared. The last method of preparation for aldehyde is from or using RMGX. What do we call RMGX? RMGX are called Grignard's reagent. Grignard's reagent. Okay. So, let us start with HC triple bond N. Hydrogen cyanide, HCN. Okay, you are seeing a triple bond here, right? On to that or across the triple bond, I'm adding RMGX. So let me take CH3MGBR or I in presence of ether. Now, First of all, your Mg will have delta positive charge. CH3 will be delta negative charge, tiny negative charge. Mg is a metal, right? So it has a tendency to get that positive charge. Here, the pair of electron will be shifting towards nitrogen. As a result, HC double bond N Okay, carbon will now have positive charge. N will have the negative charge because you shifted the pair of electron from the position between carbon and nitrogen. You shifted it to the nitrogen. As a result, what will happen is Carbon will have a positive charge. Nitrogen will have negative charge. Now, the bond between CH3Mg breaks in such a way that the CH3 with its negative charge will move towards the carbon and MgI positively charged MgI will move towards nitrogen. So you are getting an intermediate. Let us just call it a addition compound or addition product. This is unstable. We need to hydrolyze this. So I will hydrolyze this twice. Generally in the books they have shown hydrolyze together. Two molecules of water are used together, but I'm doing it in two steps. So, with the first water molecule, what will happen is, look at this, you break this bond and from water, H goes to the nitrogen, OH goes to MGI. So, you will be getting... H, C, CH3, 
double bond n and that n has a hydrogen this hydrogen has come from water plus on the other hand you have mg i okay and there is a oh you can write this as mg oh i hydroxy magnesium iodide or basic magnesium iodide then take this product now okay that is h c ch3 double bond nh take that and hydrolyze it once again i'll do this on the next slide i'm repeating h c c h3 double bond n h again hydrolyze this with water acid hydrolysis so this time the bond will be broken here and oxygen of water will be moving along with carbon the two hydrogens are remaining with nitrogen because of this your product is h c c h 3 double bond okay double bond o along with that you have n with one hydrogen and two more hydrogens that came from water. So, ammonia. Okay. Now, you can put all the steps together and write it as a complete sequence. Say, for example, H C triple bond N treated with Mg. I'm sorry. CH3 MGI then in presence of ether you get your intermediate H C double bond N here a CH3 and you have MGI then hydrolyze it hydrolyze it you will remove MG O H I along with that you have H C C H 3 double bond N. Hydrolyze it again. Acid hydrolysis which gives you H C C H 3 double bond O plus N H 3. Now, in one step or in multiple steps, you can write this. Multiple steps as in, uh, you know, taking down the product of the first reaction separately. All right. Let us now continue with the chemical properties of aldehydes. The most important or I must say one of the most important chemical properties of aldehydes is nucleophilic addition reaction. Nucleophile, something loves the nucleus. Nucleus is positive, so nucleophile is either negatively charged or it has uh, lone pairs of electron. Okay, now aldehydes are more reactive than ketones towards nucleophilic addition reaction. So, aldehydes are more reactive. This can be used or questioned in fill in the blanks type of questions. Aldehydes are more reactive than ketones in nucleophilic addition reaction due to two factors, two reasons. The reason also can be a question. Now, the first reason is inductive effect. This is, this inductive effect is more in ketones due to the presence of more electron releasing groups, which stabilizes the positively charged carbon. 
Okay, so what is exactly meant by this inductive effect? Now, if you take a ketone R, C, R, double bond O, both the R groups are electron releasing groups. Okay, so the electron density around the carbon, the carbonyl carbon will be high because of two electron releasing groups. Suppose such a ketone is undergoing a nucleophilic addition reaction or C double bond O plus a nucleophile is attacking the carbon. So the nucleophile okay, will attack here and the double bond will be shifting towards the uh, oxygen. So R, C, R, okay, and O minus. They mean to say that the positive charge on the carbon, okay, just when the nucleophile is approaching, this positive charge on carbon is stabilized by the electron releasing alkyl groups, which means this particular carbon's tendency to get bonded with the nucleophile will be slightly lesser compared to an aldehyde. Moving on, the second factor is the steric factor. Steric factor is more in ketone. Um, that means, you know, your ketone, okay, the nucleophile will be finding it difficult to approach the carbonyl carbon because of the bulky alkyl groups. Whereas in aldehyde, okay, in aldehydes, there is only one R group, R, C, H, O. Now, even if it is the inductive effect, there is only one R group to push its electrons towards the carbonyl carbon and there is only one bulky group. So it is comparatively easy for the nucleophile to approach the carbonyl carbon. Now, under nucleophilic addition, we need to study addition of HCN as well as addition of sodium bisulfite, addition of HCN and addition of sodium bisulfite. So let's first see the addition of HCN. This is your aldehyde RCH double bond O and you are treating this with H plus and CN minus. CN minus will be attacking first and you will have R, C, H single bond O. Okay. And the CN will be attacking the carbon. O will have a negative charge. I mean to say, as the nucleophile approaches the carbon, the double bond will be shifting towards oxygen. Now, in your HCN, there is H plus as well. So, RCH and you have OH and CN. Now, the final product here is called a cyanohydrin. Cyanohydrins are the products when HCN is added to an aldehyde. Now, you can repeat this with HCHO or even with CH3CHO. Now, CN minus, first step is HCH. You have CN, you have O minus which then combines with H plus forming HCH. CN and OH. So this is a cyanohydrin. This is a cyanohydrin. 
one more example with uh, uh, CH3, CHO, treat this with HCN. Now I'm adding it in a single step, CH3, C, H, and you will have C, N, and O, H. The products are called cyanohydrins. Moving on with the next one, addition of NaHSO3. Addition of NaHSO3. So let us take an aldehyde. Treat this now with Na plus and HSO3 with a minus charge. R, C, H, your O should actually take that Na plus. So you get O, N, A and here SO3, H. But as soon as this product is formed, there is a proton transfer. There is a proton transfer. The Na comes to the position of hydrogen. Hydrogen goes to the position of Na resulting in R, C, H, OH with SO3, Na. These products are called sodium bisulfite adept. All right. So you can repeat this with uh, any aldehyde like acetaldehyde or benzaldehyde can be used in the above reaction. Moving on, now we need to study a special type of nucleophilic addition reaction. This type of reaction, it is addition followed by loss of water. So, our heading is nucleophilic addition reactions followed by removal or loss of water. Nucleophilic addition reactions followed by loss of water. Okay, so under this, let us learn some reactions. First one is aldehydes treated with hydroxyl amine NH2OH. This is called hydroxyl hydroxyl amine or hydroxyl amines is what I have written here. Anyway, R, C, H, double bond O, treat this with N, H2, O, H. Okay, now this is nucleophilic addition followed by elimination of water, followed by removal of water. So look at the way I'm removing water. Then your product here is R C H double bond N O H. And these kind of products are called oxymes. So this is an oxime. All right. One example, probably with CH3CHO, acetaldehyde. Generally, they do ask with acetaldehyde or with benzaldehyde. Hydroxyl amine. The result is CH3CH. Double bond NOH along with water. Okay, so here also you should write water which is eliminated. All right, 
one more similar reaction. There are more reactions which we will be uh, discussing in the coming videos. For today, one more reaction that is aldehyde plus hydrazines. Aldehyde plus hydrazine. Now, what is hydrazine? NH2, single bond NH2 is called hydrazin. Now, let me take an aldehyde R, C, H, double bond O, treated with NH2, single bond NH2. Remove a molecule of water. Then what is remaining is R, C, H, double bond N, NH2. And the product here is called a hydrazone. The product is a hydrazone. Before reaction, NH2, NH2 is hydrazine. And after reaction, the product is a hydrazone. Let's repeat again with acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde treated with NH2, NH2. Your product after the removal of water, you have CH3, C, H, N and NH2 which is a hydrazone. Now in the next video we will be discussing very important reactions of aldehydes. Okay, stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.